During the Beatles album Brother Soul, John and I decided to get a strap. It was a pair of them and they were both pale blue. It's a bit of the basic original color on the back. And uh, it's called Rocky. Hi, I'm Paul Waller. I'm with the Fender Custom Shop. I've been here uh, 17 years. This has probably been one of the more difficult ones to pull off just because of the complexity of the artwork and wanting to get it right so bad. To have access to the original is really the only way to, to do it properly and then spec it out completely from diagnosing the pickups and the wiring to get the neck shape right and being able to make templates off the original. And having a way to, to create some color samples is good in terms of making the replication 100% authentic. It's a 61 strap, but he didn't get it till 65 during a recording session. By 67, it was, it was painted. During 67, everybody started painting everything. And I decided to paint it. And I got some Dayglow paint, which was quite a new invention in them days. The colors themselves, they're fluorescent colors, which are already difficult to find. Go shopping for fluorescent colors <laughs> and see what you find. Thankfully, the guitar's been pretty well preserved in terms of it hasn't, you know, spent a lot of time in daylight to compromise the original colors. Mapping out and doing kind of a paint by number has been huge, and I've, this is a process I've been kind of developing through through an earlier project. And in total, there's something like 17 different colors, which you know, one or two will be mind-boggling. Some colors are very vibrant, some are dull, and very, very, very challenging. One of the, the hardest things I've ever had to do. It's a 1961 Sonic Blue Strat, just like we all know and love. The, the shape is real in line with an early 60s uh, oval C neck shape. It has all the original equipment in it, the original vintage pickups. So I, I uh, called Abby out of retirement again, and I said, hey, will you make the pickups for this, this project? And she was happy to do it. So she's, she'll be winding all the coils for it. I would say the one thing that really stands out on this instrument is the figure on the back of the neck. I'm not entirely sure how it made its way over to England, but it did, and uh, it's a nice specimen. So replicating that's been also very difficult at finding the right material that has an uh, equal amount of flame and bird's eye to, to get that neck. So those that are familiar with the instrument will see that the wood grain in the neck is uh, highly figured, and we're doing that very same thing. What makes this more special than some of the other projects I've done is knowing that they'll, they'll trust what we do with the responsibility that we have to make sure that everything's held to a certain integrity and uh, we're doing the right thing for the Fender brand and for the, the Harrison legacy. I think it's important to take the extra time and recreate something that is supposed to be a piece of the original. It's a piece of George. <laughs>